Welcome to Money Talk with Tiff, a podcast where we discuss everything money from tips and tricks to current events. Follow me on my journey to become debt free and meet other cool people along the way. I am your host, Tiffany Grant. Now let's talk money. Hey, everyone. So welcome to another episode of Money Talk with Tiff. Today, I have a wonderful lady. This um, interview has been in the making for quite some time. I follow her podcast, which is United Queendom. Today, I have Teddy Renee. She's an expert in creating strategic and efficient systems to achieve personal and business goals. She specializes in goal planning and management and has helped hundreds of business owners, entrepreneurs, bloggers, family, and friends do the things that they say they want to do. So, hey, Teddy, how are you? I am great. How are you? I'm doing great, even better now that you're on, because <laughs> I know <laughs> you're going to drop so many gems. Um, so with that being said, let's just hop right in, uh, because we both kind of talk about the same thing, like how your mindset plays a role mm-hmm. on everything in life, not just money, but everything. So if you want to just dive into that, like what do you talk to with your clients as far as their mindset is concerned? So my, um, I guess my entire focus on mindset comes from like a, just a natural uh, wanting to know things. Like I love to know things. I tell people all the time that my superpower is overthinking because <laughs> it allows me to like discover and identify a bunch of problems that may or may not need to be solved, but just having the thought process that goes into it. Um, but I also have a background in psychology, so I have Mm. some years of experience in um, behavior modification, and I was on the path of um, getting my master's in applied behavior analysis. So Mm. mindset and just like having the thought that you can do something is absolutely key. A lot of people, especially uh, that look like us, have been taught a lot of things that limit us. Um, I know we were briefly talking about uh, negotiating and how like a lot of people don't even ask for more. They usually just accept whatever salary is being offered to them because they're just grateful for the job and the opportunity. And that's absolutely insane to me <laughs> because it's like we all, it's built into us that we, we can't have more or we're not worth more. Or we're not more valuable than what someone else has. And it's just shifting and changing the way that we view ourselves and viewing ourselves as the value instead of as a tool or an asset for someone else to use. Um, So working with my clients, I help them to identify what those beliefs and what those um, limiting beliefs are and identify ways that we can translate that into like an affirmation that helps them to believe something more. Um, And a lot of my clients, like they will (laughs) say, you know what? I never really thought of it that way. And it's like, well, sometimes we're absolutely not going to think of things that way because we don't know any better. So I just help to, I don't want to say be devil's advocate, but I help to them to um, pull out things that they themselves are either too scared to really say out loud or they just don't see it. Um, a lot of it is just a lot of conversation about um, what it is that they want to do and then why it is or what they feel is holding them back from doing it. And then from there, we break down the process of talking through, you know, how they got to those spaces. And very often it's a boundaries issue, (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. you know, them people having expectations of themselves based on other people's needs and other people's desires. Um, So that's a, for most of my clients now, that's absolutely what we work on first. You know, everyone's goals are different. They either want to change careers or they want to make more money or they want to start a business. But before we can get to that, we have to understand and help them understand how their thought process is going to play into all of that, good or bad, so that they can um, hopefully avoid a lot of the missteps that people make in business and career. Okay, well, cool. Yeah, in that regard, we kind of have the same um, attack then. Um, Because when I'm talking to people about money, I'm like, okay, first of all, I don't know if you've heard of like fixed versus growth mindset. Um, Mm -hmm. But I studied a lot about that. And I'm like, okay, and just for the audience. So a fixed mindset is like, if you believe that, you know, you have to be 
born rich or you have to be born with a certain skill set and you can't really learn it. Um, like, you know, things are innate in people and that's the only way to get there. And then like a growth mindset is more like you believe that anything can be learned and, you know, you can grow from anything and things like that. So I definitely preach that. I'm like, you know, are we in a fixed or a growth mindset? And if we aren't in a growth mindset, how can we change that? What are some things that we can think through um, to make that happen? So definitely believe in your mindset controls practically everything, practically everything. So with that being said, let's get into negotiating salary because that's something that we have both helped e helped people with, um, me with my background in HR and then what you do. So it, it just amazes me how many people don't ask. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I was always told, like, closed mouth doesn't get fed. You know, the worst they can say is no, but not everybody um, has that. So what would you say is your biggest tip for people when it's time to negotiate or when they should negotiate? Some t tips for negotiation. My, my big ones are, number one, do not, at, at your very best, when you're interviewing or in that process, um, don't go in blindly, like know as much as you can about the position, about the ideal candidate, about the company, about their structure. Um, if you know people who've ever worked for them, um, getting information and insight on the compensation package. So not just the salary, but like what are the vacation days? Like is PTO um, separate from sick days or am I going to have to use my PTO as a sick day? Um, if you have children or if you have family needs, um, making sure that you know what it is that you need before you even think about applying for the job, like having what you need set. Because a lot of people will see uh, the job description or the job company and just be so hyped that they got the opportunity that they just forget about themselves and will accept the job without it uh, covering or taking care of their basic needs. So I absolutely have done that in my life. I literally used to work for pennies because I enjoyed the work. And I was just happy that someone said yes, especially if you're coming off of being like unemployed, mm -hmm. that I ended up working two and three jobs just to have enough money to pay for all of the expenses that allowed me to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> so like car and daycare and, you know, bill, household bills. But it was like, what is like, what is life and why? So my, my very, what, very one number one tip is know what you need before you go in, regardless of what the job is or who it's for, because we get really glossy eyed and we're like, oh my God, I can't believe much to work for this great company. But it's like, yeah, but are you taking care of yourself or, you know, are you going to be able to take care of yourself while working for them? A lot of times the answer is no, mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, um, uh, after that, though, I would say to ask questions, like ask for Anything that you want to ask them, make sure that you get all of that information up front because every aspect of what you are signing up for will absolutely affect your life. Not just the financial part, um, but like the culture of the company. And, you know, I don't know how a lot of other people um, think, but everything that I may have to deal with that someone else doesn't have to deal with, it absolutely has a price tag for it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm coming into a culture that is, I'm going to have to work harder in than the person standing next to me, you're going to have to pay me for that. Like that's extra work on my part just to be seen as an equal. Absolutely going to need some extra money for that. <laughs> like if I'm coming into a space where, you know, I have to drive or my commute's going to be a lot longer, I'm absolutely adding a price tag to that as well. Like that just adds how much I'm, it's going to, I'm going to accept for this specific job because all of that plays into, you know, me taking care of myself, me taking care of my kids, me taking care of my family and my sanity. Like no one wants to go to work all day and do great and then come home and have to figure out how to take care of themselves or stressing over money and all of that. So know what you want um, and then ask all of the questions that you want to and then ask for more <laughs> than what you think you can get. So if I say, I, I you know, I need $70,000 a year to live comfortably, to cover all of my bills to take care of my expenses and to have a little leftover. But I feel like and they've told me that their salary range is like uh, 65 to like 80. 
always ask for more than the rage. <laughs> like always, every time. If they say their rage is 80, ask for 90. Um, the worst they can say is no. And um, oftentimes, they may actually say yes, because a budget is a budget. Just like we bust our own personal budget for things that we think are of value or important to us, companies will do the same. Um, if they feel you have the value that, that they need, they will pay what you believe, what they believe you are worth. So if you are worth $90,000 salary, even though their budget's 80, they can shift some things around. And oftentimes they will if you do the process of interviewing and building that desire um, the correct way. Yes, yes. So what Teddy is saying, guys, is research, 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 like (laughs) know what you're worth before you walk in the door. Um, There's plenty of websites Mm -hmm. like Payscale, for instance, where you can put in like your background, where you went to school, all of this stuff so you can get a range of what you should be looking for and then add to that. Like, (laughs) because of course the algorithms are not going to get everything. So, you know, Mm -hmm. just take that baseline number and just add a little extra. I will say um, one thing that I tell people as well is to just be quiet. Because a lot Mm -hmm. of times people will talk themselves out of money. So I have a quick story. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) So what happened with me personally, so every time I used to apply for jobs, I would always put, um, you know, when they ask for your current salary or previous salary, I always put zero or it's negotiable, right? So um, at one of my last jobs, the recruiter, she kept asking me, so how much are you looking at? How much are you looking at? And I would not say, I would just be like, you know, it's negotiable. Um, She was like, I saw you, you put zero. And I was like, yeah, you know, (laughs) because I'm not going to show you my cards up front. Right. So (laughs) which I'm glad I did because long story short, at the end of the day, I ended up tripling my salary. Like what they were going to offer me was nowhere around what I was going to say myself. So um, definitely, definitely, definitely be quiet. When it comes to negotiation, the first Mm -hmm. person who talks loses. So just keep that in mind. (laughs) Absolutely. I 100% agree. And congratulations (laughs) on that triple. Yes. And so that's where I started like literally like falling into this, like as not just like an interest, but actually helping other people because I tripled my salaries and after changing careers um, in the course of about two years or so. So I literally went from working in special education and doing behavior modification work um, to being, you know, to doing systems engineering and project management and consulting in information technology. And like literally, and I'll tell anyone all the time, like I, I literally went from food stamps to six figures and like, it seemed like a snap. <laughs> and it was just like, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't as difficult as people make it seem. But um, to your point, letting them know what you want or what you make, I absolutely tell all of my clients, say nothing. Like, don't overshare. Like, mm-hmm. if they ask a question, answer the question as best as you can without giving them all of the information. Because what you see might be a good thing. Um, they may twist it around and make it not so good without the context that you have behind it. So, mm-hmm. answer the question, keep it short and sweet, listen to what they're saying, and then use every piece of information to prove your case that you are worth whatever it is. And make it, let them make the first offer. Mm-hmm. Like, don't, if do not Tell them a number, a figure, anything, and uh, if you can, as best as you can, until they give you that offer letter. And then when they give you that offer letter, ask for a few tens of thousands more. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and see, that's that's what I did as well. So, you know, even after she told me, like, how much it would be, um, like, with the offer letter and anything, and of course, you know, the recruiters follow back up, and they're like, is this okay? And you 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 always have your poker face so i was like oh looks good you know can you send me over what the benefits are because it's my hr cap now i'm like can you send me over uh-huh. like uh benefits at a glance just so i can see and make sure that this would be a good move you know and i'll give you an answer in a couple of days even though in my head i'm like cha-ching <laughs> But I was just like, you know, play it cool. And then when I came back, I was like, ah, you know, uh, 
let's just add a little bit. They said yes, and I said I'm sold. So, <laughs> nice, right. Um, but and just, that's, the, yeah. that's the thing too. A lot of people, I'm sorry, that a lot of people don't do. They only look at the salary. So, yes. like asking for that benefit package and that compensation yes. package, that that could be enough. Like, you don't. What are the bonuses like? What are your year in review process? Does everyone get a bonus? Does everyone get a raise? Like, those are questions that you absolutely should ask, and they will give you a copy of the package. Let take it. Like once they give you that offer letter, ask for the compensation package, ask for the benefits package, and actually read it. Yes, <laughs> like yes. go through, go through it, read it, compare it to what you are getting now. Because sometimes it may look nice and like, oh, they have this great insurance that I have. Yeah, but you're also losing out on your 401k matching because right. this company only matches three percent, but your current company matches seven percent. And it's like people don't look at any of that, you know. So. Absolutely, the comp- that whole benefits package, like the full picture, is is key. Not just the salary, because you don't pay taxes on that. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And see, that's one thing that I do teach. Since I do have an HR background, I'm going to be teaching like what are benefits, like how to make your benefits work for you type thing, because it's not something we learn in school. And, you know, even if we go through college and everything, nobody teaches us this. So as soon as we get our first big person job and, you know, they're just like, oh, here's the salary, here's the benefits. We're like, oh, we'll take it. But we don't really know what we're looking at. And I was one of those people as well before I got into HR. So, you know, I just think it's really important to look at the full package. Like I've taken less money, but better benefits before. Absolutely. Yep. Um, (laughs) Definitely. Absolutely. And yeah, and when you get that first big, big girl job, like the first thing I did was I took it to my my grandma. I was like, hey, look what I got. And she's like, oh, that's nice. But little does she know, like she's older. So her generation, what's good and nice for her isn't it doesn't necessarily translate for me like even though she knows what my responsibilities are as a a mother and entrepreneur and all of those things like she's just like oh yeah they're again they're giving you something that's good you should take it instead Mm -hmm. of having that insight to actually dig deeper um yeah absolutely (laughs) and see that's the thing like there's so like benefits change at a breakneck pace like what is popular changes like every few months so Mm -hmm. and mostly companies follow suit with other companies so whatever is a hot button topic at the time that's what you're going to start seeing at all the corporations so like for instance Mm -hmm. now what's popular is high deductible health plans and hsa plans so um you know and people that have been in the workforce for a long period of time they're not even sure what that is you know because they're used to the (laughs) ppos and the hmos you know paying Mm -hmm. going to the doctor paying a copay and then being on your way so it's all about education so if if you didn't get anything else from this episode (laughs) yep Research and education are super important when it comes to salary negotiations, um, changing your mindset. All of those things can make a profound impact in your life. Absolutely. (laughs) So with all of that being said, (laughs) this was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Where can people find you if they want to learn more? Um, if they want to learn more, they can find me um, at teddyrenee.com, uh, Renee with an E, just one E, so uh, T-E-D-D-I-R-E-N-E.com. Um, I'm also at Teddy Renee on Instagram and um, LinkedIn. I hang out on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> and I will have all of those links in the show notes. Thank you so much, Teddy. This, I, I am sure, like I can almost bet my bottom dollar that this episode is going to help somebody and somebody is going to have a raise in the next few days. No. <laughs> I, I I receive it for them, and I hope that they ask for more, even though they're probably going to get what they ask for up front. Get, ask for more. That's all I ask for more. Thank you for having me, though. This was great. Oh, yeah. No problem, girl. We have fun on this show. Um, so thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, too. Thank you for listening to the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. For free resources and materials, head over to moneytalkwithtea.com. And while you're there, why not sign up for our newsletter so you'll never miss an episode. Talk to you soon.